Even if you're a safe rider, motorcycling can be dangerous. Let's try to mitigate some of the risk. Today we'll make a pair of protective blue jeans for motorcycling. A patch will be placed on the outside of the leg and potentially later we'll place a pocket, a larger pocket on the inside of the upper leg for hip protection. To begin with, we'll place the patch on the outside here. This is what it'll look like from the side view, this area. Your length can vary. I will just be using whatever length I want here, but you want to cover the knee area and so that as you sit and stand that you, you are always over the knee area or if you come off and it'll somewhat protect the shin area down here too. Mine's probably going to be fairly long so it'll protect some of the shin area as well. So that's what the drawing is to show us. We'll use a pair of blue jeans, an old pair of blue jeans, and we're actually going to make a cut in the blue jean to put our protection in there. We will use some foam padding. It's about a quarter inch thick. And it's relatively supple, yet closed cell and rigid. So it should work good for knee padding. And I'll put that in the hip area as well. I plan to put some leather on it. And adhere it to the foam padding eventually. So it'll be a two layer impact protection with the closed cell foam and a relatively thin piece of leather. This is just old used leather. In fact, I believe it came off of a couch. And it's going to be slipped in from the inside, inside of here. And what does that do for us? It keeps this material, the foam, off of your leg on the inside. The pant leg is going to feel the same as it always did on the inside. Everything's going to be on the outside. This is what we're going to use to adhere the foam to the leather. And then we'll trim it out nice. Just You can buy this at a lumber yard. I have never used it. It says to be very careful of the fumes, so we'll, we'll be careful. You'll need access to a sewing machine. You could stitch it by hand, but that would be handiest if you have access to a sewing machine like to sew or know somebody who likes to sew. We're going to make this patch area between the marks here. Again, this will be cut and hemmed. There'll be a hole on the inside that you can tuck the leather and foam in in both directions so that it can be removed for cleaning. So that's the idea of it. This is the material I'll be using for the area I'm going to patch. Fold it over as we do it and sew it so that you don't get any fraying threads. This is just some material off of an old spring jacket. You could use any color. Silver goes well with blue. So that's what I hope to use. Again, it's just scrap material. We'll cut a window in the denim. This is just an old pair. You may use a new pair. You may use an old pair. We'll be cutting a window in here to be able to place this through it underneath of the patch. So I'm going to put a hem around here so this doesn't continue to fray and I'll probably be using like a buttonhole stitch. Yeah, I can sew a little bit and that's what will help if you sew a little bit or have somebody with access to a sewing machine, preferably an open arm sewing machine. If you don't know what that is, I'll show it to you. But uh, the patch will run about this size. Now these are fairly large pants because I wear a size 36, 34. 
So you can see the length of this patch is going to be around 16 and a half inches. I think you can see if I move this rule around a little bit here. And it's about six inches wide, the patch. The window to put it through will be about five inches. Okay, what you see here is an open arm sewing machine. And that means there's a bar here that you can put stuff over the top of. And that's gonna make it handy for what we're doing. Because as you'll see, I'll take the marked pant leg that I had showing you before and I'm going to slide it over the top of that and that's going to help but you don't need that you can do things different ways so we've set the machine up to the instructions uh, for sewing a buttonhole and now we're going to try doing it up here of the stitch and how it's working so you can see the stitch okay that's what the buttonhole looks like there and we'll take the scissors and just cut this center section out what I've tried to do is do a buttonhole one big buttonhole around that frayed portion just to kind of hem it before I put the patch on it and it's not perfect but after that we're just going to cut it out this will just keep it from fraying doesn't have to be perfect at all and yours if you're using a pair of jeans that don't have a hole in it you won't have to do that at all you can just sew a straight line on either side of it to keep the fabric from coming apart but i've chosen to do this i guess more than anything just to make life difficult but it should work okay there it is cut out ringed around with a buttonhole stitch. It can still fray and will for some time. And what it keeps it from doing is just simply running away and fraying forever. And that's what you want. This isn't going to show again. It's going to be covered. Okay, prior to patching over this, this is what the blue jeans look like. If you remember, the right side that we're looking at had a hole in it. The left side didn't buttonhole the two cuts, have it laid out where my patch is going to go, and we're about ready to do that. Okay, I'm laying out the fabric to cut the patch. And I'm just marking with pencil, and I'm going to make the patch first, as I've done here, so I can lay it on the jean and sew it on there so that it's fairly rectangular in shape. Everything is a little bit here and there when you're sewing, but all I've done is fold in those sides on that, so you've got to think about doing that and making a straight stitch down along the side. So, nothing fancy. That's what won't show. That's what will show. Just straight line stitching, backing up at the corners so that it doesn't pull apart. Now that we have the two patches sewn, we can put them on here and not be quite as concerned with trying to get them rectangular because we've already got them made. Now when you sew something like this, 
even on an open arm machine, there's an issue with trying to do the vertical length. And it's a pretty big issue. These are pretty easy. You can do a cross stitch like this, but of course you don't want to do them first because you might get a big bulge in the middle. Now what does the back side of this look like? It's just been turned over and hemmed like that. Nothing fancy, but it'll stay put. So there's one stitch all the way around it right now, and there'll be a secondary stitch all the way around it after it's sewed on here. But what I'm going to have to do to be able to make this vertical stitch, I'm going to have to open this leg seam up here. And I'll do it on the inside because this side will show and I won't be able to do it as well. Plus it's thicker material out here, how they've got it doubled up. So I want to do it right here. You want to measure it before you turn it inside out. Write your figures down on here and then place a mark between which you'll remove the seam on the legs. Do it on the inside, remember, that's the seam we're going to take apart. Don't mark it incorrectly as I started to. Be sure you're taking the right seam apart. You don't want to double your work. I have a stitch cutter. You don't need that. You can use a razor blade or a knife or a scissors. We're going to take the seam apart with this stitch cutter. Real easy. This will be harder. But we'll re-sew this afterwards. And you can use a straight stitch or anything. It, it'll, it'll go back together relatively easy. I may put a stitch on it like this because the sewing machine can do that. But if you're sewing it by hand or don't want to get fancy, you sure don't have to. This will come out quite easily. If you're good at this, you can just zip along. We don't want to go past our mark down here. But it won't hurt anything if I do. Remember these pants. They're just a prototype, really. I mean, I haven't done this before. You're seeing it the first time through. So, hopefully it'll work out okay. Let's see what we're getting to here. Got to take out more of this. And that's how you do it. Now I'll be able to get in there and sew with the sewing machine. Yeah, I'm going to have to put it back together, but no big deal. It's really quite simple. Now that I've opened up both inside legs like this and cleaned it up a little bit, pulled the thread out, I'm ready to put the patch on the front. I have to lay that out on here, and I may just, you can use stick pins, or I might just use a little tape and tape it on there before I begin to sew. I've never used tape before, but I'm going to tape the patch down on the leg, and I'm going to sew the outside stitch along here on the outside of the leg first. So I try to get it lined up properly, then I'll take the tape off, and continue sewing the other three seams. Back up. Okay, now my thread is held there, so I'm, I have a little bit more leeway to move around here now and grab stuff, because I know it's not going to move there.
following my spacing here and trying to keep it in here although the thread is going to vary where you have it and it's it's nothing's going to be perfect back up so that thread doesn't jump around on me and fray out. Maybe a little bit forward again and that's it. And we'll remove the leg. That's our stitch. Cut that. We're going to cut it. We're not going to try to go around this thing all at once. We're cutting it. We have to cut the bobbin thread off of it in here. And that's the idea. We'll reverse the leg around, sew the remainder down, down this way, and complete it. The seam's been actually opened up to virtually the full length of the uh, size of the patch that's going on here. And we'll tuck it over, being careful just to get one layer of fabric on top here. We don't want to sew the two together. We don't want to sew the leg together. We're going to start at one end and take it all the way to the other end. All right. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Looks good to me. And I'm hard to please. Well, there it is, all sewed on. There's even a piece of foam in there. I tucked in there a small piece, so you can't even really see that. But it's all sewed on. This line is straight. The other line obviously arches. You see the foam, it's about that wide. The piece of foam I cut in reality will be wider. And there'll be leather on top of it. But that's the way it looks. Well, we're changing out the thread on here. And the reason we're doing that, putting a little heavier duty industrial type thread on here to hem that seam that we cut apart. You gotta kinda know what you're doing. So there it is, threaded. Now that we've got the machine threaded with a little heavier duty thread, we're gonna put those two pieces of fabric together that we took apart here and we're gonna run the machine down that and this as long as the machine can handle two pieces of denim like this the no-brainer you're just gonna follow along and make sure you keep these two together and that's it So this will be simple compared to what we've been doing, having to work inside that open arm. Now, you might want to put another line of that on there a little bit further in here. I'm going to see if I can... Uh, possibly make that fancy stitch on here. Okay, we're going to get a little fancy here. I've got the machine set on zigzag stitch and we're going to try to hem this line here. Remember it's separated there. We've already sewn it twice here, but we're going to hem it along here with the zigzag stitch. You certainly don't have to do this and I've virtually never done it except on a little practice strip before, so we'll see how it goes. Well, that's the stitch it lays down, and it keeps that held. You don't have to do that. Could have run, just run another sew mark down there if you wanted. You could have done a lot of different things. But it works. And that's what we did. And that leg should be done. 
Okay, with the pants made with the knee patch, frontal area of the pants sewn together, we'll move on and make the large inner pocket for the hip protection right here. So what I've done is cut four pieces of scrap material. And the sizes of them, the long piece, approximately 12 and a half inches. And by eight and a half. And the shorter piece is about 10 and a quarter by eight and a half. Okay, the lines you see that are pointed on the sides were cut with a pinking shears. If you don't know what a pinking shears is, this is a pinking shears. And that keeps the fabric from fraying as much. You don't need that at all, but it just creates a cut like that that keeps it from fraying and it's kind of handy, but not necessary. We're gonna make a pocket to put a piece of foam in something about this size, which I've got a piece of this laying around. And it'll be like that. Again, it'll have leather put on it. And it'll fit inside of the pants. So we're gonna sew one of the large onto the small, like so. Should be an easy sew, because we're just gonna go around the perimeter. The top flap, is going to be a cap that I'm thinking right now I'll just slightly sew here and here and that'll hold the piece inside of there. It doesn't need much holding because your belt will be right up here to hold it inside. So it shouldn't be able to go anywhere. And then I might put a little stitch right here on the outside of the pants. It won't show to keep it from moving around in this fashion, just when putting them on and so forth. So let's get started on that. I have my two pieces of fabric that are making the pocket for the interior of the hip area of the pants laid out here. I've already given you the dimensions I made for that. I have a piece of foam here that I'm gonna use eventually for some of the protection. It's a little over nine inches, about nine and a quarter inches long and about six and a half inches wide. So I'm making the pocket to fit that piece of foam, which will have leather over the top of it. Yours may be anything you choose, but that's what my size is. So okay, initially on these pockets, we ran a straight stitch, just about a quarter of an inch in from the edge. And that's simple enough. After we run that straight stitch all the way around the three sides of the pocket, we're going to go back and hem the edge here with a zigzag pattern stitch. I have to set the machine up for zigzag, and that's pretty much the only change that's needed on it, and we'll go around it. You can see the needle going back and forth if you look close. You'll have a nice zigzag like this around the pocket. But again, you don't have to do that zigzag. Top of the pocket's still open here. And then I'm going to invert it. As I said before, the pocket will be inverted and the foam will go inside of it like that. You won't see that outside edge. That's why it doesn't matter if you do that necessarily. But it is more than just for looks. It keeps it from fraying.
we've hemmed across the top here. We've run stitching down the sides. Now it's ready actually to be placed inside the pant leg. I guess I want to hem, hem along here yet. We'll fold it in a little bit, probably like this, a couple of times. Eventually we'll sew this into the pants, right along the seam. Eventually I'll tack it down here, just here. But I'm not going to do that until I sew it into the side of the pants because I won't be able to do it if it's flapped over like that. So I'll sew it with this flapped up and then I'll stretch it out and just tack it. And that'll be the cap for the padding. But uh, I want to do something with the top here. How did we do? It's ready to go in the pants. Okay, it's time to sew the pocket for the armor or padding, leather, whatever combination you choose to put in for your hip on the side of the pants. And what I want to do is try to sew it from about an inch over from the rivet along this seam. I want to avoid the rivet. I've sized it up on my hip where it should go, and that's what you want to do. I want to sew it in here, inside the pocket, right kind of at the edge here. And I want to sew it on this part of the material, not on the denim, but right in here. That's my aim, to try to sew it from about here to here and see if I can run that line. So if we put in here like this, pull this back and I'll sew along here. It's going to be a little bit tricky. Later I'll be able to hopefully fold this over and tack it here and tack it here and be able to stuff my armor or padding down in the pocket like that and it'll fit inside the pants of the entirety. It won't mess up the pocket and it'll be like that. So let's get started. Okay, this is difficult to align so I've got it in here so where I can see my seam and I'm going to start and try just tacking it on the one side first and then maybe go back to the other side to try to align this because it's difficult for me to get it where I want it. I'm using blue thread so it matches somewhat the blue jeans as I do this. So I'm, the thread, the bobbin and the thread itself are both blue at this point. So let's give it a try. Feeling for where that seam is. Feeling and looking at the one edge this edge and feeling, feeling it. Okay, well that's where it's hitting on the pants out here. You can see that line of blue there. And I'm down a little bit, but it's, it's a difficult sew. This is the tail end of the thread here. This gets cut off. But if I can match that on both sides, I think I'm doing pretty well getting it where I want it. So we'll spin it around here and see what we can do. Okay, we've got this completely turned around in the sewing machine now. We're studying our two ends. Got to keep this flat. Everything's got to stay flat together. My pocket's a little bit uneven, so I'm running it that way a little bit uneven. I'm going to try to feel and keep that seam going now. So here we go. We're doing the opposite side. We're coming out this way. around 
again. We'll try to finish the seam now. We won't have the problem of it bunching up because we just have a short length to do here. We should be able to finish this up. Should be good enough for what we're doing. Again, basically not going to show on the outside at all. But yet on the inside, we've placed our pocket. Now how do I, how do I tack it as I said? I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can put it in like this. Or like this, lengthwise is what I want to do. That would be the easiest. That way I'm not sewing through this fabric. I don't want it to sew through this fabric. Now I've just got the pocket here laid out. And I'm going to tack this end a little bit. Got blue thread on it. If I got to pull it out later, I'll be able to see the blue thread is what I want to pull versus the white. If I don't get it right or if it doesn't work properly for me. So we'll get that aligned. I'm just going to do a little bit here. I'm not going to get crazy. Try to keep it off the white a little bit. Little little run here. Maybe one more time forward. That's it. So now that's tacked, but I still should be able to get my armor in there. And I'll do the other side. Well, we're set up in my cluttered workshop here to begin gluing the strips of leather to the foam. And we're going to do it by putting a lid on top of the can so that it doesn't slobber all over the brim. So that's just taped on slightly, but it says to stir it up well. We're gonna stir it up well and begin brushing it on with a toothbrush, no less. So I'm gonna to try to do two layers. So I've got larger pieces eventually to go on the hip area, but I'm gonna put some strips on there first, just kind of conserving the leather a little bit. So I'm gonna brush a coat of glue on the gray foam and on the suede side of the leather. We'll see how that works out. You've got to wait 15 to 20 minutes, probably going to put a second coat on and then adhere them together and then try to put a second layer over it. So we'll see how that goes. They say to stir it up. Yeah, I can feel it's a little heavier down at the bottom. So we'll get that stirred up. So brush that off. Get that out of the way. Put this lid back up here. And we'll see how this works. I really don't want it to run down the sides. But if it's porous material at all, which obviously the foam kind of is porous, it'll take quite a bit and it dries up too. So this is how we're putting it on. This is the hip protect area here. show you here how it looks on the leather. You want to be careful so you're not getting it all over creation. I'm going to put another layer on top of here so it doesn't matter too much if I get a little bit on the surface of it.
decided to second coat everything. You don't have to be quite as fussy with it the second time through. You don't want to glue it to the paper either when you're doing it, so you got to be careful and not move it around too much on where you've been. leather together, the strips, as I told you I would, onto here, and then we're just going to have to trim it later. But yeah, I got it pretty much. It's going to be covered with another piece. Yeah, it seems to be sticking quite well. I had tried a practice piece before, so trim that out afterwards. Make sure you stick it down well, put some pressure on it. And again, it's going to get a layer over the top of it. Here's the other piece. It may not be beautiful now, it never has to be beautiful. But this is what it's looking like, pieced together. Now we're going to do these long sheets. They're going to have another piece coming from the other end on them. So I glued it up as far as it's going to go, and then there'll be another piece coming down here. And then press and work the bubbles of it out of it. Most of this is going to get a second layer across the top. That's what it looks like. I will be putting another piece coming down from the top like this over that. You were just smearing the glue over the top of those pieces, just making sure we coat the whole area that's going to get the second layer. piece now. This will be the knee area right here in the center approximately and that will have two layers of leather on it. And that will just get trimmed off afterwards. And squeeze it down on there good. The knee area here has two layers of leather on it. It's kind of soft leather. It's not probably as good as regular leathers are made out of. But since there's two layers on it, the foam certainly should protect you from going down. Rather than going down, there's this piece of cotton in between you and the pavement or the gravel. So. I'm pretty happy the way how that turned out, so I really thank you for watching that. I hope my garage isn't too big of a mess for you to view, and let's put them in the pants after they dry for a bit. Okay, this is what they look like. Fully install the hips. 
okay they work fine we'll sit down that's how they are bent should be no problem riding the motorcycle That runs all the way down to here. And the hip armor in place. Between here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. Now, if you make this with brand new denim, I would suggest possibly putting the patch on the inside because you'll have full heavy duty denim outside and then everything will be covered up and you'll just have the look of a denim pants. If you prefer having the pants look like protective pants, well then do something like this. They're still going to show up that there's something in there whether you have it on the inside or not. The reason I didn't do it on the inside on these is because they're used jeans, they were wore. Initially, I thought I wouldn't have to open up the seam. Remember, we opened up this seam here to get in here to make the sewing lines. And that, again, was sealed up. So, you have the option of doing this inside or outside. I've chosen it on this experimental pants to use a used pair of denims and to put it on the outside. But you can choose whatever you want for your armor for your padding, for leather, whatever you put in there. But that's how it's going to look. And I'm going to take these on a test drive. It's a beautiful day out along the Great River Road, along the Mississippi River. I've got the pants on with the padding, hip padding. All on, I've ridden about 40 miles. It's February. February in Minnesota. And the river's open and it's a beautiful day. But the pants, everything seems to work fine. You definitely know you have them on, but you definitely have a full suite of protective clothing on here with the padding, with the leather, the hip pads, knee pads, it's all there. So if you've watched the whole video, you've got to this point, I want to thank you for watching. I hope I entertained you. I hope maybe I did you some good. Keep on riding. Remember to ride in a way as if your life depended upon it.